Keywords, keywords, keywords. You hear me talking a lot about this over on my Twitch channel as well as in the self-publishing books group on Facebook. I think it's high time that we can kind of curate all of that information into one video. So I'm going to share with you in this Kindle Direct Publishing tutorial a keyword research proven method. So make sure you stay tuned. This is Self Publishing with Dale where you learn to publish books that sell and build an unstoppable author brand. What is your preferred way of gathering keywords? Do you use any kind of online tools or software or do you just do it the old fashioned way? Let me know inside the comments. Also make sure that you stick around for my full list of free and premium keyword research tools. I think it's important that before we jump into the full tutorial that we address what exactly keywords are. A lot of people have a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings to when it comes to keywords itself. A keyword is essentially a way of describing a particular product of some sort and it can be something as simple as one word but in most instances it can be two to three words or more and sometimes even more than that would be what's called a long tail keyword. So if you ever hear me say or other people say keyword, don't just limit yourself to a single word. Those are great but they tend to be a bit broad. We're going to want to make sure that we make our keywords a little bit longer. Keywords help in the function of discovery. This means that anytime someone is say looking for something, they've got a problem and so now they're going to want to find a solution. This goes from everything from nonfiction to fiction. They got a problem and hopefully you're their solution and those keywords are the bridge that connect your audience with your book. But where are keywords used anyways? Well this is in what's called metadata. Metadata is your title, subtitle, series name, description, the seven keyword slots with 50 characters per slot, and so much more that just entails the full description of your entire product. Now I know quite a few of you inside the fiction realm not necessarily are going to be able to load up a lot of heavy keywords and long tail keywords into your title or subtitle or your series name. So that's why keywords function probably best behind the dashboard inside those seven keyword slots or within your actual book description itself. Those of you in the nonfiction realm, well you've got a little bit of an advantage in that you can actually utilize some of those keywords within most if not all of your book's metadata. Okay, so now that we know that keywords help in discovery, how do we find the right ones? What are the right ones we need to be looking for? Now, I'm going to be brief. This is just a quick plug on one of the products that I particularly enjoy. It's called Publisher Rocket, also formerly known as KDP Rocket. And this is my preferred research tool because it saves me a ton of time and heartache. I would rather just be spending binge watching Netflix or watching wrestling on television. Okay, so now that I've got all that information out of the way, let's go old school methodology. Step number one, install DS Amazon Quick View. DS Amazon Quick View essentially shows the bestseller rank of particular books on the Amazon platform. So if you happen to go inside the Kindle store and you scroll through the selections underneath the keyword, you'll be able to see very quickly what the bestseller rank is for a particular book. This means that where does this place in the number of sales compared to other number of sales of all the other books. So we want to be mindful of that but we also don't want to be wasting a bunch of time clicking on each book, scrolling down to the product details and looking at the bestseller rank. Now it should be noted, and I'm going to say this in a little bit, you're going to want to make sure that you have the DS Amazon Quick View enabled for incognito mode. Now open your browser in incognito mode. Type in your root keyword, screen capture it, search each relevant keyword. So as it starts to auto-populate your selections based on your particular keyword, we're going to be mindful of each one of the keywords that's most relevant to our title. Don't worry about trying to please everyone. There's going to be some that you go, ooh, that's got to be really, really profitable. It's going to be pretty awesome. If it's not applicable to your book, then don't bother with it. 
Once you find the best root keyword that you can, that means the string of words that best describes your book, we're gonna go through the alphabet. So as a for instance, we could type in home workout plan A, home workout plan B, and then we'll go through the entire alphabet and see if there's any other derivatives of my particular root keyword that we can work with. Now that we have this entire list of keywords, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna search each one of them now. We're gonna manually put it on in there and we're gonna press enter to see what comes up in search volume. So this means in the top left-hand corner of the particular window in Amazon, you're gonna see a number of products that come up underneath a given keyword. Scroll through the actual books that pop up here in the very first page, in the first page alone, and I want you to be mindful of the bestseller ranking. If it's below 100,000, you're good. Below 10,000, it's competitive. Below 1,000, you're in for a fist fight. This means that this is a keyword that is going to be really tough to actually place on the first page placement, and that's ultimately where we want to get your publication to. Wait, stop. Here we go, bonus tip. What do you do with the keywords anyways? One, find about seven to 12 good keywords. Two, organically work it into your metadata, kind of like what I said before, your title, your subtitle, your book description, get it on in there if you can help it. Three, do use keywords from all your metadata. This means that any time that you're finding some of these particular keywords and you're working it within, say, your ad copy or your book description, if you will, you're going to want to make sure that you work that into, say, your seven keyword slots in some capacity if you can help. Only put in the really invaluable, the really good keywords that you saw. I was like, okay, this is not very competitive. I can definitely win on this one. Four, don't use the same keywords for your title, subtitle, or your series name in those seven keyword slots. You don't need to double down. In fact, Amazon even says this on their section based on keywords. They say, you know, hey, if your title is already there, you don't need to double down and put it inside the actual seven keyword slots. It tends to be very wasteful of that space that's already limited as it is. I mentioned at the beginning of the video how there's a few free resources online that you can utilize for keyword research, but it comes with a bit of a fair warning that, listen, it's free and it's free for a good reason. So you're gonna probably end up curating a lot of great keywords and in with it, you get a lot of not so great keywords. So this net's gonna be cast out. Sure, you could probably be going after a certain type of fish, but you might end up getting a bunch of ugly fish or toadfish, if you will, and you're gonna probably have to toss some of those out and just use your best discretion. Here are some of the free resources. Google AdWords and Google Trends. Quite possibly one of my favorite overall tools. They don't cost a dime, and sometimes they get you some stuff that you didn't otherwise think about. To set up a Google AdWords account, it's a little bit kind of, you know, wonky, but for the most part, what you're gonna end up doing is to get a Google AdWords account, you just go in, sign in with your Gmail account. You have to set up like an ad campaign of some sort. As soon as you get into your dashboard, just pause that ad campaign and you're gonna have access to the keyword planner. Find that keyword planner and you can literally just look one after the other after the other and say, for instance, we take my one root keyword that we had discussed before on home workout plan and we can search that up and get a larger search volume that Google will bring back. Now, let's just say, for instance, we're not really 100% sure. We've searched some of those keywords over in the Amazon Marketplace, and maybe there's like a split between, say, home workout plan for men and home workout plan for men over 50. And we're kind of going, I'm not really sure which one of these two I want to shoot for, which one's going to make the most sense for my book. Okay, so just go over to Google Trends. And what you're going to do is take those two particular keywords that are very similar in makeup and plug it in there and press enter and it's going to show you which one draws in the most traffic. In the event you see a flat line or there's no search results, then chances are pretty likely these keywords probably ain't going to work out for you. The second resource, Keywords Everywhere Browser Plugin. This one's a fun one actually, Kelly showed me some time ago in that you can get this free plugin and essentially anytime you go into anything that uses a search engine, be it Amazon or Google, what would you'll do is you'll start to type it in. The auto population comes down and you'll get some suggestions with a search volume as well as sometimes the cost per click of a particular keyword. 
pay attention to some of those search volumes. So those words that you're gonna start to see, you're gonna be able to know this one, oh, well, it's gonna be pretty good. This one, not so good. You'll see the search volume, the number of searches, and you're gonna really measure it out and say, okay, this might be worth my time, this may not be worth my time. Keyword Tool Dominator. I actually reviewed this product quite some time ago and they've got a free model as well as a premium model. And all that to say this, that you can get the free model, it's literally worth it. You can just go into their option to search on Amazon for a particular keyword and it'll scrape it and give you different derivatives of that. But herein lies the issue is because it's going into Amazon and not necessarily the bookstore or the Kindle bookstore, it's going to, again, get you a bunch of keywords that might be completely unrelated to your stuff and you're just gonna have to go through, pick out the winners and remove those losers and send them off into the trash can. I've got a full review video that you're gonna wanna make sure that you check out if you just go right on over there right now and I'll see you there. Keyword rank is a value assigned from one to 10, ranking the popularity of a keyword based on the position of the keyword suggestion as returned from the autocomplete service.